Okay, David, well, thanks very much for letting me uh, come to Pond House. Uh, can you just fill us in on how many inmates you've got and staff, etc., before we uh, start, please? Uh, I'd say we'll probably end up with about 80 horses this season. Uh, we've got about 35 staff on site. When you include uh, gallops people, secretaries, um, and the lads and girls that look after the horses, so um, it's a fairly big setup for the southwest. Okay, so you were um, you were born into a already established yard. What are your earliest memories about being around uh, Pond House? Um, probably knocking down the wall <laughs> where my mum and dad live at present. Um, not many, not many horses around at the time. There was more, uh, more greyhounds in the stables because uh, my grandfather used to run uh, the dog track at Taunton. Uh, it was actually on the Somerset County cricket ground, and he used to run the dog track there as well. Um, and then suddenly uh, the greyhounds started disappearing, and uh, more horses started turning up. Did you still along to the dogs? That was before, it was uh, before I was old enough, so I'd, I'd love to have been round in those days. I wish there was a, a dog track round here nowadays. Hang on, bump. <laughs> so we've got the old Rouge in front. She really be on board, the girl that looks after him. He's just started back cantering after his summer holidays. What do they do on their summer holidays? They just go out to grass? Go out to grass, yeah. Get weighed to make sure they're putting on weight but not too much. Get their feet done and then they'll go on the walker as well later on on their holidays. So uh, from a, from that early age, did you take an active interest in the, the training and what was going on? I didn't take too much of an interest um, until a bit later on in life. Um, I used to like to have a bet with my grandfather. He used to give me um, prices, uh, early prices. Uh, and then later on in life, um, when I was a sort of a teenager, I started to take more interest and saw... Uh, how many winners my dad would churn out every day and Peter Scudamore um, in the winner's enclosure and uh, I suddenly started to get the bug from, from then onwards. So I remember you uh, hanging around the joint with your, uh, your granddad who was very well respected uh, for the local betting rings. Um, what sort of memories do you have about the actual betting side of things? Yeah, well in those days, um, the idea that I went round with my grandfather um, round the pitches in the southwest race courses in those days i think if you did six months um with him and you were related you could actually um, in those days take an over one day if you wanted to so um, that was the idea behind that uh, but i think after i did my six months with him they, they actually changed the rules um, but i enjoyed doing that and it's a different side to to racing uh, very important the prices of horses if you've got as a jockey um, you should know the prices of the horses. If you've got a 50 to 1 shot that goes off and goes 25 lengths clear in front, there's no need to worry about that horse as much as if it's a 6 to 4 favourite. Um, so that's why we uh, like to let our jockeys know whether a horse has been backed um, in the parade ring beforehand or you know, if, if something's there's been money for a horse, then it is quite important to take note of it as a jockey. Okay, so would you, was there ever a consideration of seriously keeping the biz, but making business go in as opposed to taking over the training? Um, uh, even though I went round with my grandfather, it uh, didn't really um, float my boat. Um, I think my father would have loved to have taken over from him one day. Um, he was quite fearless when he worked for my granddad in, in the betting shop. Um, and I think he would uh, either win a fortune or lose a fortune. <laughs> And did, and did you ever get any good advice from your granddad about uh, punting? Yeah, there's only one winner, the bookmaker.
Okay, so you know you're well established in Pond House in your own right. Um, what are the best and worst things about training racehorses? Uh, I think the best thing is about being in, in the yard, uh, everyday running of the yard and seeing the horses being exercised and keeping them happy and, and healthy. The, obviously the worst thing about racing is, is when you lose a horse, um, no one wants to see that and um, unfortunately it's the downside of, of our sport but at the same time horses um, can get killed out in the field um, and that is actually the most, most dangerous place for them. Okay, so um, as far as owners and horses go, what comes first, the owner or the horse, or the other way around, or obviously does it vary? Well, it's a, it's a good question, but you know, if you keep your horse happy and healthy, then he'll run to the best of his ability, um, which is what the owner and the trainer wants. So, um, you know, keep the horse happy, and um, I'm sure he'll keep the owner happy. Right, so when you get a new horse in the yard, how soon do you know if you've you suddenly got a really good one there. Well, it depends on what type of horse you've got. It takes longer when you've got an unraced horse that's never run in his life. He's a complete and utter baby, and so you have to educate them. So it would be longer then. Uh, if you've got a horse that maybe you've bought from France or something like that, then you have a certain level of form that you know the horse has run to already, and then maybe he's strengthened up over the summer, uh, and uh, you know some of the lads or girls ride, ride them and they think that they, they go well um, but I always say that um, speed is for on the on the flat um, you have to stay well over jumps so some of our best horses have, have been the slowest ones at home in all honesty um, and at the end of the day you have to have a horse that wants to do it for you and that's one of the main ingredients Okay. Your, your dad was a pioneer, he advanced uh, racehorse training way beyond what most other people were doing at the time. Um, has it reached a limit or is it still a further that it can go um, you know, in advance to the sort of science and things of training? Well you still, you know, you're always looking to, to tweak things and try and improve things. Um, what my dad did, um, it was such a big step. I don't think there'll be another massive improvement like he did with the fitness and the research um, and try and take the guesswork out of it. Uh, but I'm sure there are ways that we can tweak our training methods and uh, we're always looking for that. And if you can get an extra 1% out of your horse, then, then there's improvement there to be had. All right. Back in the day, the yard used to be famous for enjoying uh, the odd tilt at the ring and used to get the bookmakers running for cover. Um, is there still a little bit of uh, enjoyment trying to do something like that or have you, uh, is that a thing in the past now? Well, it's like anything in life, times are, are different. Um, it's lovely, uh, I think, placing horses in the right race where you think they're going to win and um, getting the right handicap mark. Uh, it's not like it was years ago, because years ago, uh, in those days, my father was so far ahead that basically it was like going to a cash point machine and, and getting money out um, when when the money was down years ago. So everyone likes a bet. We still have the odd bet, but uh, uh, times have, have changed a fair bit since, uh, since his pr prolific winning days. So uh, how much form study goes into the running of the yard and placing your horses. Have you got somebody to do that for you or do you uh, delve into the form book yourself? Well, we all do that um, in the office and when you have the best horse in the race, it's easy because everyone wants to avoid you. So the art of, um, a big art of training is placing your horses in the right race. Um, so the girls in the office, we will mark down the horses that 
we basically are most worried about uh, and the, the girls in the office will ring round just before declaration time and find out if they're running or if they're going elsewhere and then suddenly what might look a difficult race at the five day stage then suddenly looks a lot easier at the overnight stage and then we have to make the right decision. So for a good horse, how many races in advance would you be would you be planning that campaign? Good horses play place themselves a lot of the time. Um, you know, you'd be looking you you're looking at the big festivals in the spring already. Um, you were at the back end of, uh, of last season. There are horses that you have a lot of hope for. Uh, some disappoint you. And then there are, there are always the surprise packages in the yard that um, sort of go under the radar a little bit and uh, you, you don't have that bigger plans for them. And then suddenly halfway through the season, you have to rethink. Then your first uh, foray into training was training point to pointers in the, the yard just up the road. Um, are you still interested and involved in point to points? I, I try and go to a few point to points each season. I think it's a great grounding for horses, trainers, jockeys, uh, a very important part of national hunt racing. Um, it was great grounding for me as a jockey. Uh, I had some fantastic times. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't bred right at six foot five, so uh, I'd love to have been a, a jockey full time, but um, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, but then the training, I trained for six years, point to pointing, uh, great experience uh, before I took over from my father. And you see, you did cons uh, confide to me, sorry, you confided now, so I spilled the beans that you'd rather have been a jockey than a trainer. Had you been a little bit more, uh, more suited physically, is that true? Yeah, the uh, jockey jockey's life is obviously you've got the injuries, but a, a great life, and uh, yeah, you know it's a short life, but a great one whilst it lasts. Okay. Yeah, just trying to get a little bit fast, mate. Run with the chalk. This is covered to down a bit. Okay? All right, yeah. Okay. All right. Nice again. All right, Beck. Bit fresh. Huh? Bit fresh. Yeah, it's just a bit better. All right, Bobby. Yeah, it's just a bit better today. Okay. Famously remember that your father was very adverse to anything green at the race course. So uh, if you plotted one up and you were going to have a nice little uh, tickle and the owners turned up in a green jumper, would that upset you? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be uh, against green. I remember years ago, dad had a odds on shot running and uh, Peter Scudamore came out with his brand new saddle, which was green. And uh, the odds on favourite, Julie, um, got beat and uh, can't repeat the words, but basically uh, my father told uh, Peter Scudamore that uh, he didn't want to see the saddle uh, again. And I don't think he ever did see that green saddle again. Uh, came out with a new one for the next race and it duly uh, went in. So, no, I'm not against green and uh, I'm not really that superstitious. Um, you know, probably like to keep uh, the TV interviews for after the race, not before the race, really. Um, there's quite a lot of talk about um, too much, too little racing. Uh, what, what are your opinions on racing as it currently is and how can it be improved, etc.? Well, everything can be improved and, uh, and racing 
can definitely be improved. The, the obvious one that everyone goes on about is prize money. Um, but um, I'm also a believer that there's too much racing. Uh, why uh, National Hunt Racing can't have a month's break um, at some point in the year uh, when the flat racing is going on. So the bookmakers have the flat racing to get the punters into the into the shops. Uh, it's a great, you know, people need a break, horses need a break. Um, and you come back refreshed, excited. Nowadays, it does seem to just roll on and roll on. Um, I always say if the Premiership football can have a break, then, then why can't racing have a break? Uh, you ask anyone involved in the training side of, of racing, they would say that, but um, it's here now and I would say it's probably here to stay. Um, we do need to try and get younger people into racing. It's very difficult that because there's so much choice nowadays, um, but it's something that we are working at and we need, still need to keep working at. So there's lots of areas um, and we have to keep fighting our corner for our sport uh, because like I say there's so much uh, so many other sports and choices out there um, and in the summer are the going reports more accurate these days than they used to be for, for plotting horses I think they've done uh, a very good job this summer uh, watering the courses and good going descriptions so uh, I think it's improved a lot from from what it was um, years ago. So would you say you're a fan of summer racing, having said what you just said, or do you campaign horses on it because it's there, but you wouldn't mind if it was gone? Um, I definitely think there's a place for it. Uh, number one, I don't think it should be called summer racing because um, it was supposed to be for the smaller person when it first started, but obviously, as we know, that's not the case nowadays. We don't call... Um, racing in the winter, winter racing. So I, I, it's people frowned upon summer jumping as um, being a poorer class. But I think you ask anyone nowadays, it's very hard to win in the summer or, or the winter. Um, there is a place for it, um, but there still is a place for a break at some point in the year. So when, it, so when it keeps moving, yeah. uh, you just keep pushing down on there, and that yeah. that be your balance, right? Because yeah, yeah. sometimes when it goes back, your hands go back like that, so you yeah. just keep pressing down like that. Yeah, we go a real slow to start, and then we'll get to it yeah. a bit quick. Not going to go over a jump, is it? Now, we, now we're into the inside. <laughs> <laughs> this is when we get the payback. <laughs> Not too far, he said. Not too far. <laughs> 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 Got my pocket. Uh, he, he did a bit of an interview with me, so I'm going to put it really quick. Not too much, Hi, hi, he's one. one. <laughs> I'll do a I rank. think we'll stop now. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a ranking. <laughs> Take both feet out at the same time, yeah. and then... And then. Uh, yeah. <laughs>